Next up, I want to introduce an invaluable resource uh, when you're learning or writing HTML or CSS. It's called Mozilla Developer Network. It's a web page that has all sorts of information and tutorials and documentation about everything we're going to learn in this course. So you can get there the way I usually do by just Googling MDN or typing developer.mozilla.org, uh, not .com. And this is the homepage for Mozilla Developer Network. It contains all sorts of information. Uh, if you go to references, you can click on HTML. That's what we're learning now. Later in the course, we'll look at CSS. And it includes this very detailed reference for everything you could ever need to know about HTML. And specifically, this HTML element reference is very useful. It's a list of all of the elements. Remember, there's all these elements we can pick from, including the paragraph. Uh, and let's take a look at the paragraph. So P somewhere in here, where is it? Right there. So if I click on this, it takes me to a whole page explaining the paragraph element. And it's gonna tell us what we just learned. The paragraph element represents a paragraph. They're usually represented in visual media as blocks of text separated from adjacent blocks by blank lines. They show you examples. So you can see the code and then the corresponding rendered content. So simple enough to understand a paragraph, but it can be very useful for more complicated elements and especially when we get to CSS. MDN is so useful, especially when we get to CSS, that uh, if I'm trying to understand some property or remember how it works, I might type something like box shadow, which we're going to learn in the, in the course later, and then just put MDN at the end to make sure my results include MDN. Then I go to this webpage and it tells me how to make a box shadow in CSS. I can never remember these properties. It doesn't matter, but I can never remember the syntax. So MDN is incredibly useful in situations like that. We'll see it constantly throughout the CSS portion of the course, but I just wanted to introduce it right now. It's useful if you have questions about HTML or CSS, tutorials, documentation, examples, it's all there. Next up, I wanna talk a little bit more about the Chrome developer tools. Oh, my cat is paying the microphone a visit. So as I was saying before my cat interrupted, uh, I wanna talk about the Chrome developer tools. In the previous video, I showed uh, a, a little bit of the developer tools, but I wanna dive into them deeper. So if I right click on any web page, whether it's one I made or an existing web page like this one, if I right click and go to inspect, and this is in Chrome, but almost every browser I know of, everyone I know of has an inspector it's gonna open up a panel of tools. Now mine is actually popped out into a separate window, but I can change that if I go to this little three dots here, I can move it to the right side of the page. I can move it to the bottom or the left of the page. I can move it to the bottom of the page, or as I had it earlier, I can pop it out into its own separate window. And what this shows me is a bunch of tools that have to do with the HTML content and CSS on this page. So right here, if I zoom in on this, make this bigger, I can see every HTML element on the page. So there's a lot of stuff we haven't learned. Pretty much the only thing we've learned is a paragraph. So lots of elements. I can expand them and see that content is nested. Here's a paragraph, by the way, right there. Google uses cookies to deliver its services, blah, blah, blah. That is a paragraph. As I hover on the right side, you can see that there's a blue box around the corresponding content. So if I wanna see, all right, where's this, uh, I don't know, this section. If I hover over it, we see that it's this whole thing right here. It's called a section element. Additionally, I can see any of the styles applying to these elements. Now we haven't learned anything about styling, but that's what I can see down here. So if I click on one of these things, like, I don't know, keep opening and opening and opening. There's a lot of content, okay. Here is an element, it's called an H2. It's this text that says productivity even when you're offline. You can see it's highlighted. I can then see the corresponding styles that are applying and I can turn them on or off. So as I toggle these, you can see that it's changing size, the spacing is changing. We're gonna learn more about the CSS dev tools later in the course. Uh, but it's just important to know that this inspector is here. And it works the other way too. If I wanna know, what this is right here, what type of element. I can click this little arrow and then hover over this or click and it will highlight it for me and we can see the markup, the actual content that results in this element. 
So anytime I hover over content in the inspector, it's highlighted for me on the left side, wherever the document is. And then if I click this arrow, I can go the other direction, click, and then it will highlight the corresponding code for me. So this is a really valuable dev tool to understand other websites, but also your own. So ours is very simple right now. We have two paragraphs. Here's the first one. Here's the second one. Um, I can even double click and start to edit the actual content in here if I wanted to, if I hit enter. <laughs> now I have this beautiful text in there. That's not that useful, but it is very useful when we get to CSS. We can try things out, toggle things on and off, pick different colors, see what we like, all in the browser. So that's just a quick intro to the dev tools. To get here, I went right click, inspect. There's also a shortcut. Uh, I think it's command option I or control option I on Windows, but a lot of the time I just right click and go to inspect. Okay, and then don't forget you can move it around.